The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. Good to see everybody that came out and ventured throughout the, the, the harsh coldness of this morning <laughs> for the South. Um, we, uh, this, this, uh, this past, actually this, this past, what, almost two years now, it's been pretty crazy with the, with the uh, pandemic and all the stuff that's been going on and all the fear and the evil that the, 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 the enemy has really placed and pushed onto us, right? Um, it's causing a lot of people to, to act quite strangely. You know, you never do anything in fear. Actually, you, any of the toxic emotions, if you actually are doing anything while you're in those toxic emotions and those elements, those never turn out right. You always make the wrong decision when you're in fear or when you're angry. Almost always you'll make the wrong incorrect choice, put it that way. A better way to do it is to listen to God's voice, right? And of course that is possible, and if you're ever um, familiar with any of our ministry, almost our entire ministry is how to hear God's voice, how to, to drop down and connect to Him in the Spirit, right? The message today is... The title is Art of The Art of Listening. I was going to title it The Discipline of Listening, but uh, anyway. Listen and understand. That's Matthew 15, 10. Back in September, um, this past year, 21, um, Dad preached a message called The Focus Challenge. And what's really important, uh, the, one of the more important points of that is that there's so many voices in so many different areas that we can be distracted and we want to be able to get back to focusing on what God is doing, what God is speaking, um, and, and, and really um, give that your emotional energy, you know, and, and then pray into that and not, and not what everything else is going on around you. Um, so as an offshoot, of the focus challenge, which is kind of like, what do you see God doing? This is, I wanted to, 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 to really look into hearing and, and listening and really hearing his voice and, and how that, that, what that looks like. Um, in the beginning of that message, the focus challenge, he defined um, there was a definition of behold that I really liked. Um, behold was like to, uh, he, he brought it up as to observe with sustained attention. Or to behold with, a, with sustained attention. And then, of course, he added, until the word that uh, becomes reality or uh, an experience. And I, and I think that that's so awesome, but it's also part of listening. <laughs> It's also part of your prayer life when you when you when you when you sit before the Lord, and and really listen. Um, you want that word. To you want that word to shine the, the flashlight in your in your heart to show you. You want the the nugget that He has for you to transform that part of you, right? And it takes time. I mean, it takes time in His presence. To quiet your spirit. Quiet your flesh. And get yourself away from all the other voices. Um, the focus challenge, of course, it involves an element of seeking. It involves an element of seeking. It, 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 it's a challenge. That's why we call it a challenge. There's, there's a, an effort that you have to put forth to do it. <laughs> you have to actively um, move your head in the other direction. That you know, if you're if you're uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil are trying to tempt you to, out of that, then you have to be purposeful and mindful in doing the opposite or doing what God wants, I should say. 
So the art of listening, you could even call it, because I like the word stewarding, and I've been on stewarding for years now, stewarding your attention or stewarding your hearing, um, stewarding your affections. It reminds me of that, that song with the little kids, be careful little ears what you hear, you know. Um, I chose art over discipline in the title because discipline has such a negative connotation sometimes in these days in this social aspects of it. Discipline is like, what does that look like? Is that abuse or is that discipline? And, you know, but then when you look up the scriptures and, and about discipline, there's just a few. Proverbs 13, 24, whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. He hates his son if he spares the rod. Hmm. Proverbs 3, 11, and 12, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof, for the Lord repro uh, reproves him who he loves as a father, the son whom he delights. What I really, I really like my favorite one in Hebrews twelve eleven, because it, it puts so much depth into it. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Isn't that incredible? So, I chose art mostly because it's harder for you know. It's, it's a little bit more palatable, and it's harder for me to say discipline of listening. <laughs> There's a lot of lisping involved. Uh, but anyway, hear, apply, obey equals fruit. When God speaks, he speaks in multitudes of languages. He, he speaks in all different levels. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a newbie Christian just born again, um, sometimes he speaks really loudly to them. And as we, as we mature in Christ, in our relationship with him, it, it seems like the, the, the still small voice is the most prevalent, <laughs> right? Sometimes every once in a while, there's an overwhelming, you know, almost audible voice. But for the most part, it's getting quiet before him that you hear. But what's really neat is because it's, there's so many facets of how he, um, he speaks to us continually. There's so many different areas and so many different ways, languages, whether it's a, a picture of a mountain or a majestic tree that just speaks to you one day or, you know, because all of creation points to him, right? But it could just, you know, and it could be just plain right out of his word, written word, come off the page, and, and, you know, and, and you write that down as one of your favorite scriptures. But you can train yourself or discipline yourself to be able to listen to all of the different areas that the Lord has when he's continually speaking. There are times when he's quiet. That doesn't mean he's not working. But there are most of the time he is speaking continually through us and he's it's like his, one of his greatest desires for us is to hear him and hear his voice. Why is it so important to listen? Gosh, raising kids, you learn a lot over the years, and especially when you have a few toddlers running around, why it's important to listen. Why? Because it keeps you from, from you know, harm, usually, you know. Um, there's a whole bunch of different reasons, but... For the most part, it's mainly because it's in the scriptures it tells you to. Jesus actually says it. It says, listen and understand, Matthew 15, 10. He who has ears to hear, let him hear, Mark 4, 9. Again, Jesus called to the crowd and said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this, Mark 7, 14. Consider carefully how you listen, which is a good one, in Luke 8, 18. Consider carefully how. Listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you in Luke 9, 44. And of course, my sheep listen to my voice, John 10, 27. Another translation I really like says it this way, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. 
And I think that that's just profound. God remains active in our world and he speaks to us if we would only listen. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his, <clears throat> to his servants, the prophets in Amos 3.7. Call to me and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. That's Jeremiah 33, 3. Love those threes. <laughs> he who formed the mountains and creates the wind and reveals his thoughts to man. The Lord Almighty is his name. Amos 4, 13. The Lord confides in those who fear him. Psalm 25, 14. One of, that's one to think about, the fear of the Lord. My, my, my um, watered-down definition of the fear of the Lord that you could just use off the cuff is basically taking God seriously. It, can you get it any easier than that? If you take God seriously, that's the fear of the Lord. That's all of that is. It's not... You know, you're trembling in your boots type of thing. It's, it's taking God seriously, taking him at his word. That's Psalm 25, 14. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes, from, comes to me. John 6, 45. You know what's really neat is when you, when you look up that word confides, confides means that they trust you with secrets or private information. So the Lord confides in those who fear him. He, 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 he gives us, reveals to us those secrets. Amen? I think we need to learn how to listen. Along with the uh, why we should actually, why it's important, mainly because, well, first of all, Jesus tells us in his word that it's important. Listen to me, he says. And it's not just because he's telling us a story. It's because he is living in, in us right now. You, you, you have to take it in consideration. Back then it was, yeah, he's, he's going to be revealing something to whoever is listening to him. But now, as he's speaking, he is in our hearts, still speaking still telling us to listen as we walk through our daily walk and our routine. Religion says the Bible is just a bunch of do's and don'ts. And you can go out your, you know, walk out your Christian walk um, just by doing such, right? What not to do, what to do. Um, and it's all very humanistic and boring, really. I mean, that's, that's, that's horrible way to live a Christian walk. But the reality of it is listening is required in any type of relationship. And if you want to actually grow and mature and get more out of your Christian walk than just your do's and don'ts, and I, have, I can do this and I can't do that, I can't swear, I can't drink, I can't do this, I can't do that. But if you miss out on the relationship aspect of what he did on the cross for us and what he what he's doing now inside us, you're you're missing out on 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 all of of life. You're you're really missing out. And part of the thing that I I always thought you know is he gave us two ears and one mouth. Let's go in on our prayer time and listen more than when we when we actually are praying. Like listen more. And then talk. Why not? And I know that's a little cliche, and I'm probably, I don't know how many people have probably taught it before, but yeah, you have two ears and one mouth. Why don't you chill for a while and see what God's saying? <laughs> you know? It builds intimacy. And that's one of the main reasons that, that we want to be able to listen in our prayer walk. One is Jesus tells us to. The second one is it builds intimacy. Some people are afraid of that word. It helps mature a relationship, put it that way. When, when Gwen and I counsel, we have a few different tools that, at our, that we use in the natural. Um, 
we we use uh, when 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 people come to us, we use a 60 day challenge, which is the biggest, uh, probably most important of all of them. The 60 day challenge is basically you you're cleaning up your own garbage, you're staying out of the other person's suitcase, you are you're reconnecting and kindling that that relationship with the Lord so that you could hear clearly. And 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 when you do that between your the Lord and, and yourself, you you will naturally come back and and work and you know and start working on the, the other relationships in your lives um, with a lot more clarity, right? The so we, we put a lot of emphasis on the 60 day challenge as a tool that we use. But it's all still about communication with God and, and relationship with God first, right? We get rid of the toxic emotions that get in the way, the, the stuff that, um, you know, um, anything that the, that the enemy has in, in us, um, there's deliverance that takes place. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Those of you who have taken it, you know, it's awesome, especially if you followed through. Um, we utilize uh, five love languages. In all these tools, you'll, you'll see that the main purpose and the main point is communication. Communication between you and God, be, you know, communication between you and, and your loved ones and your relationships. And one of, the, one of the greatest things that I think was ever written was these five love languages. Why? Because it shows us how many different ways that we, how different we really are created by him right and and that if we're not speaking each other's language we don't understand each other we won't and it's and it's easy to do it's like when somebody is as far as far as the love languages you have words of affirmation you have quality time you have physical touch acts of service and receiving gifts there's five and you can look them up anytime. It's Gary Chapman wrote them. But if I'm a words of affirmation guy and somebody else is a receiving gifts type of person and that's how they feel loved, but I feel loved when somebody says, hey, you did a great job or you're just such a wonderful man. Um, and the, if that gifts person like typical, most typical men actually do this. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting it. <laughs> we say, oh, you know what? I would really like that. I'm going to get that for my wife. Because <laughs> I know I would like it. When in reality, all she wanted was be greeted at the door when you come home and, and give her a hug and kiss on the cheek and, and ask her how her day was. And that means more to her than the gift that I that I probably spent a lot of money on, and and this and that. But but it's all about the art of communication, the art of listening of, to that other person and really what they're really saying. So you know, guys, like when 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 your wife says, "Oh, it's not that big a deal. My birthday's coming up." It's a big deal <laughs> for the most part. But also you have to take, you have to not just read between the lines, you know, because that's guesswork. But you really have to pay attention to the Spirit of God and what's going on inside them. And He will give you a clue, especially parents out there that, are, that have young, you know, children. Um, they, he opens the door if you would just listen. He opens the door to that miraculous spiritual realm and, and gives you insight that you wouldn't not, you wouldn't normally have you know and so the next time that you know somebody is crying or somebody's you know saying this and that I, I have some stories you can you you can ask the lord you know what's really going on and how can i how can i be help helpful and show love in your in your love in this situation and he'll answer you So we use the, the, the five love languages because it is so important that we have, you know, we know each other's languages. Um, we also hit on the spiritual gifts, the spiritual gifts in Romans 12, Romans 12, 6 through 8. You have, I think, 
probably, well, there's seven, right? There's prophecy, there's service, there's teaching, giving, they're motivational gifts. Giving, exhortation, administration, and mercy. Those are the motivational giftings. And we all have one or two or three. God made us that way. And it's not, and it's irregardless of all the other factors that make us who we are. Because the gift doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we have good character, bad character. It doesn't matter how mature or what our temperament is. We have gifts. And we can use them for good and bad. But the last one that we that we brought we bring up is written by a, a mutual uh, friend of ours from Dad's past, um, Dr. Sandy Colkin, and and they have a company called People Keys, and we use what's called the DISC, which I don't know if every anybody's familiar with that. The DISC, um, it's a temper, it's like a it's a temperament. It's a unique temperament um, explainer. I don't know. And what it does is it breaks apart. It, it tells you what, out of four different types, what mixtures you are and and of each of those types of temperaments that are out there. It's a, it's um, it's used just about everywhere, whether it's in business or in churches. Um, I learned a lot of it in. Um, a, a very large church that I had used to go to in Ohio. Um, they used it there for the people that um, were just coming in uh, and wanted to do helps and, and what have you in the, in the ministry. And I was part of their onboarding team. So we would administer the disc profiles and we would then place people based on their temperaments and, and their natural tended, you know, tendencies and, and how God built them. Um, whether whether you're a D I S or C, um, and those in the mixtures of then in there, what's fascinating is is if you know anything about the disc, and I'll and I'll, look, I'll I'll give you a little overview, is that there's the the temperaments are so different um, when you have somebody that is a, a real high percentage of any of them, right? they stick out like sore thumbs. So it's like they become very obvious. If you're a straight up, almost a straight up D or a C or an I, they all have general tendencies that are, that are, that are all the same. And especially if you're real high off the chart. C temperaments are very organized and, and very factual. Um, the D temperaments are, are very like the go-getters, the, the, the people that are in the that are in the in charge they usually are in charge or if they're not in charge they look like they are or they should be um, they try to be what they might not be um, there's not a real high percentage of d temperaments it's like f somewhere between four and seven percent of the whole population the i temperaments there's are very high i talkers um, they're bubbly um, the the temperaments actually came from originally from um, Hippocrates and the four fluids, and I'm not going to go into the four fluids because that was disgusting. But the eye temperament was <laughs> was blood, and 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 it was because it was a bubbly, warm fluid. Well, anyway, um, the eye temperament is also a sanguine. So you have D, I, S, and C. The S temperament was is generally characterized by. Um, they, they, they like the familiar and the family and the not and, and the safety um, they're in they, they're like they, they like the status quo to keep it the, no no waves right those are the s temperaments when I was when we were first pregnant with a, my my first daughter haven I prayed to the Lord I said you know out of all the temperaments I think I really 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 like the IS temperament, because they're just the, the most warm, because they they love people and they're and they're soft and hearted and they are very talkative and they 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 just ooze love all the time. Those are the I well. So I prayed, Lord, I want I want that for my for my child. <laughs> I th I just think that would be the greatest thing, especially for a little girl, to just be you know love on her daddy and and stuff. It was selfish, I know. 
But for me, a C temperament, as I am, I thought the IES temperament was just so attractive. I thought that was that would be just great. And little did I know what I really was praying for at the time. But the funny thing is, is that all three of my children, <laughs> well, Haven actually turned out to be the IS, but I'm pretty sure, I mean, they're still growing and everything, and I, they have changed, but I'm pretty sure that, that the other two are SI. Not too bad, but it's what I prayed for, so it's a good mix. I just need to figure out how to get her to stop talking because I think that <laughs> because I, when I prayed for the IS, I'm pretty sure that the talkative part is, is not a spiritual gift. <laughs> if it is, I feel bad and I apologize for that. But but I mean, let, let me let me just tell you. I mean, just just go over a little bit of it of the disc because it is so fascinating. And, you, and you'll be able to picture people, as, as I read some of these, you'll probably be able to picture some people, if not yourself. The D, or the choleric, they're, they love it when you're brief, you're direct, you're to the point when you're explaining what uh, you know yourself. They like, ask what, not how. What needs to be done? I don't need to know how. Just tell me what needs to be done. They focus on the results. They desire results. Doesn't matter what the results look like. They just want it done. Um, they suggest way. Oh, they like it when they when you suggest ways to help them solve problems because they like results. Um, they like it when you highlight the benefits when telling them about your ideas. They don't necessarily like other people's ideas. So they, so they like to hear the benefits if your idea is good. They'll, they'll take it from you. Um, they like it when you discuss a problem in a light of how it will show results. They have difficulty understanding you when you ramble or repeat yourself. They have problems when you focus on problems instead of solutions or if you make generalizations, or if you make statements without support. That would be the D. The I, which is Haven, loves it when you give them an opportunity to talk about their ideas, or, or their emotions, or other people. It doesn't matter. They just like to talk. <laughs> they like when... <laughs> They like when they when you assist them in developing ways to transfer talk into action, because they they they're like wow that can happen. They love it when you share experiences with them. Now, if you can get them to stop talking long enough to hear a story, they think all experiences are awesome stories, just like cartoons, and they'll remember it forever. Maybe. But they, but they like the opportunity to listen to that because it is entertaining. Um, they like it when you recognize them for their accomplishments. Give them opportunity to motivate and influence others. Give them a stage, right? Show them that you accept them. They love it when you show them that you accept them. Explain the details, but don't dwell on the details. It's a downer. Communicate with them in a friendly and light manner. They love that. Because deep, deep communication sometimes is too rough. <laughs> You're bringing me down, man. <laughs> they have difficulty. Now, this is, this is, what, this is, what, really, uh, this is what really affected me with, with knowing what Haven is like, my daughter. They have difficulty understanding, you, understanding when you do all the talking. When you eliminate their social time, they don't understand. When you ignore their ideas and accomplishments. When you tell them what to do without asking their input. Now that sounds a little prideful or arrogant maybe. 
but they want to feel like they're a part. Even if it's a discipline, they have to feel like they, they were part of it. That it wasn't that you were just this evil person, you know, putting a railing up around my deck. You know, so <laughs> not that I wouldn't fall off, but it's because you're just evil. They want to be a part of it. So what you would do is you would, you would have to build that railing with them or you would show them why, you know, this is, this is because I, we, can hang, we don't want to hang off the side and fall. But I think that one of the things that, I mean, all the kids are different, but let's see. The, let's, let's go to C. C is me, which is sometimes hard to believe when I'm reading these things, but C loves it when you support your ideas with accurate information. I like accuracy. They, are, uh, they like it when you're specific and you explain yourself. They like it when you're patient, persistent, and diplomatic while providing explanations. They like it when you agree with facts rather than the, the emotions when agreeing with them. They like it when you allow them their space and their independence. Try having that when you have three toddlers running around the house. Tell them up front your expectations of them. Yes, I don't like su surprises. Give them the pros and cons of an argument. Eh. They have difficulty understanding when you refuse to explain the details. You just give me a blanket statement and I'm like, don't know what to do with it. They have difficulty understanding when you answer questions vaguely or casually. And they hate it when you surprise them with new information. Oh, you know what, Jennifer's not going to be able to preach on Sunday and it's Saturday night. <laughs> can, can you preach? <laughs> ah, I would die. That would, that would literally kill me. But you know what, if, it was, if I was an I, like, like Haven, she would be like, yes! Hello, friends! <laughs> one of the things that... <laughs> that's one of the things that she actually does. I mean, she's done it when, she, when she was younger. Um, Gwen and took the kids to, to, to Walmart and as soon as the sliding doors start opening she's like hello friends <laughs> that's an eye temperament it's wonderful now the primary S loves when you express a genuine interest in them as a person when you give them answers to how questions because a lot of the, the, there are a lot of how questions believe me especially growing up with these learning these the language of our children how why how does that work why does a light turn on how come I get electrocuted if I put my finger in the socket you know there's a lot of questions some of them will just be you know life experience will answer those ones but but most of the I think that's why my kids are s temperaments um, at least I, for now, they love it when you're patient with them. When you when they when you give them sincere appreciation, give them time to adjust to changes. You have to give them time to adjust. Present ideas or changes in a non-threatening manner. Again, this is unique as far as discipline goes with these kids. It's like a it's a, a unique training experience. Um, because you have to look non-threatening even though the, the, the immediate response is they just poured my hot coffee all over my lap, you know, and you have to respond to them in a non-threatening way that's loving to, to, to help me out here. <laughs> We're always learning, right? And they love it when you provide feedback. They, 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 they really do not like it. And this is, the S temperament actually as a whole is about 75% of the United, I mean all of the world, period. Most people are S temperaments or have a, a, a mixture of the S temperament in their 
personality uh, temperament, right? Um, they don't like to be, they don't like pushy or aggressive people. Pushiness and aggressiveness is hard on them. That, that, that flips them out. Um, demands that are beyond what they feel that they can, they can do. If you're real demanding or if you're confrontational, they usually crawl up into their shell as if they were a turtle and, and try to try to get out away from that. Um, but I thought it was fascinating that God would give me the IS and SI temperaments, all that I requested <laughs> when I prayed for them. But we use this, all these tools as a whole, um, and I'm sure there's, there's probably hundreds more that we could use. But like I said, the 60-day challenge is, 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 is just one of the most life-giving things because it involves the, 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 the communication aspect of, of getting closer to God and intimacy and also with others. So it's kind of a dual-purpose, all-encompassing thing, right? Um, but we do use these other ones as far as like the disc and everything goes um, to help us be able to understand what you are saying when you're talking to us because of how you were raised and how you were brought up and what God put in you as far as your gifting and, and calling. So, cause we don't know you, you know, but we want to be able to get to be able to speak to you too in the communication process in a way that you would know that we're loving you. Um, and, you know, desiring for God to, to, to work in, in you at whatever point that, you know, in your life that is. So those are the things that we, we utilize. Um, but it all involves, like I said, it all involves communication and, and how we communicate and how to be more effective in communication um, because that's needed in every relationship that we have. I think, I mean, we use all these different tools because it's it's a creative, artistic process. I mean, God is creates us so unique um, that we we have to we have to get really good at creative listening um, in order to to see where people are coming from and, and almost like hear between the lines, so to speak, as we listen to God's voice come, you know, through them. It's funny, you know, I was talking about the kids and, and, and their temperaments and what have you, but you know what, what I, I consider sometimes even in nonverbal, actually a lot of times nonverbal ways, God will be speaking to us, just like in, in, in some ways, um, you know, raising kids had such an effect on, on me as far as my watching my wife, who was pretty much the baby whisperer. Um, if there is everything, anything called that, she would know the difference in the cries between I'm hurt, I have a soiled diaper, I, you know, I need food, you know, and, and all those, all they were was loud crying to me, but she knew exactly every single time who, who does what, and each of the kids are different, and she knew each of the kids' voices, and, and, and even without words, that expression, that sound, she was able to intuitively put those two and two together it made me so much more in love with her to be able to figure those things out and and say that well duh that's this the one thing that i i know that gives us i think god keeps us humble though no matter how intuitive you are is that once they're past that baby stage we also had a we also had a teenager in the house um and i think that god gives us the teenagers just so that we kind of keeps us humble as far as, you know, you can be as intuitive as you want to with these children, but you have to learn a whole new language with a teenager. An adolescent, they're like, I think I've said it before, but it was like, they're like aliens. One day, um, our daughter Grace came home, and middle of nowhere, me and Gwen and I, and I think we still, we had Haven, or she was pregnant with Haven. She comes barging into the, slams the door shut, and says, you never feed me anything. I'm wasting away. And she's got these big crocodile tears. And, and, and we were just sitting there watching a movie. And we both looked at each other like, 
huh? <laughs> we have a lot of food. And you know what? In in the in the, the all the years that we've been married, even up in well, definitely up to that point, but all the years that we've been married since then, even is she she Gwen cooks four or five days a week. We have meals all the time, prepared, ready to go, leftovers in the fridge. We were never starving our child. We were never starving her. We had no idea what she was saying. We were like, oh my Lord, I don't know who this is. But anyway, but like I said, I think the Lord just keeps us humble. And again, you have to listen to what's actually not being said and not, you know, instead of the big blow up, what's actually going on in her life was she was, she was having a hard time at school. She was having a hard time with relationships. She was, you know, it wasn't that we weren't feeding her and she's wasting away, which that never happened. Um, but God does want us to know that he speaks in many different ways. And, you know, even like the, the point in the scriptures where Elijah is caught up to the mountain and, and he hears the still small voice it's one of those things where God is like, it's it's not all the time that I have to do these certain things. Because you might be a really inept at in, in hearing God and his voice. But he wants to keep you on your toes. He wants to keep you in your in you know your your life full of wonder. And and, and I think that part of it is in your prayer time that you know it's not just a theory, it's attainable. And I think that God really wants us to know that listening to his voice and hearing him now in these days, this, no matter what is going on around us in the media, in the news, and, and who knows, you know, all the different voices. I mean, we could listen to the prophetic voices and, until you're blue in the face. Some of them all say, this, you know, some of them say the same thing. Some of them say different things. You know, the, the, the news says this, the news says that, and it's so dreary and pulls you down. But what is God speaking to you? What is he really saying to you in your jurisdiction? What is he telling you? How is he telling you to treat your wife? You know, look at the different things. As we go through our daily routine, if we would just take some time and ask him some simple questions that are not even worth a whole lot, and we get used to hearing his voice, in those in those responses because he will respond I'm not saying you know what kind of detergent should I buy Lord I'm, I'm you know not that petty but I mean some smaller decisions should should I should I make my way this this to this side of town today or 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 not you know those kind of things sometimes God has some really unique um, times where you bump into certain people and he that he wants you to run into that you would never do if, if you weren't paying attention to his voice or gave him an opportunity, right? I think it's attainable. Some people say, I don't know what God wants. No, I don't know what God wants. I don't hear God's voice, but I guarantee you that you're listening to a voice from somewhere and you're probably paying too much attention to it. You've fed it too much, whether it's, you know, CNN or whatever, Facebook. If you fed it too much, then you might have a hearing problem. You might have some hearing loss in that area, but you have to get refocused on the focus challenge. You got to get refocused and listening back to God. How is it that we can hear this still small voice now? The secret place. We talk about it. We, 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 we teach about it. Our whole ministry centers around dropping down Connecting with God in our spirits, Jesus in our Bible heart. Um, we we have the, the the new book that's coming out, the 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 series, the secret place. It's about finding that secret place. And you know what? Raising kids, I'm telling you, there is no safer, most awesome place that it that that a parent's lap, right? There, it's like a miracle that God created, that is not like anything else. When you have a hurt kid or somebody, there was a misunderstanding or somebody fell down the steps or, you know, there's all kinds of things that happen all day long, right? But immediately when they crawl up into your lap, their, their, heart, their heart stops racing. The tears start to stop, you know, they feel safe. 
to me. That's a secret place. And I think as adults, <laughs> I'm telling you, as adults, we have a secret yearning that's built into us that we could crawl up into God's lap, so to speak. You could call it drop down, you could call it a secret place, you could call it whatever you want, but it's there where he provides your safety and speaks to you. It's where he whispers his affirmations, his corrections, his challenges. Because, you know, in that safety, you can take it. And his discipline is because he loves us. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I think not only that hearing God is attainable, but once you practice in your prayer time to crawl up into his lap, you can start utilizing that listening time as divine guidance throughout your day, your daily walk, whatever it is. You'll be able to bring that divine guidance and experience God's presence with you throughout the day. How encouraging would it be that, you know, husbands, if the, if the wife heard directly from God's own mouth, how her husband's day was going and she made an appropriate preparation for him when he returned home. Would it blow your mind? Or how lifted up would our wives be if we simply took a few moments out of our lives and asked, Lord, what do I need to do to love her better today? Ask him, not figure it out. Oh, she just needs a, a new watch or some earrings. Earrings are good though, by the way, guys. <laughs> trial and error <laughs> one of the biggest challenges that we face though is that we don't hear all the you know we don't we only hear in part we see in part we hear in part and so there's safeguards that that you know have been developed over the years and and one of the things that that we can look at as far as a safeguard um that Jen's taught on is the Wesleyan quadrilateral. I'm not going to go into it too much, but you know what? If if you're listening and your and your and your motivation is um, to understand your children, to understand your spouse, to to you know um, to understand better your friends and how they speak and their love languages and different things, God gives you a. a, a, a mercy and, and, and gives you a little bit of grace more in that, those areas so that you can, you can kind of stumble through. But God doesn't speak contrary to his word. So if you're hearing voices that speak contrary to his word, then there's, there's an issue, obviously, right? So there's some safeguards. God, he follows common sense most of the time. Um, he's given us the church and other believers to bounce stuff off of, Right? And of course, there's always been history, and does this, does this happen before? Does, does this sound like something God did in the past? Or is it, or is it you that's just experiencing this notion? <laughs> and so that, I think that's what's really important. The, the Wesleyan quadrilateral takes a lot of the different ideas, the new things that are out there as far as religious uh, religion goes, and really puts it back into, into focus. Um, and what voice is coming from where, right? True listening, I believe, is an act of discipline. Failing to listen is not so much a sin as it is a choice to live a powerless, uninspired Christian walk. There's no wonder. There's no ahs and oohs. Like, what's God going to do? You know? You without really listening and following through and applying it to yourself and then obeying, what is there to a Christian walk besides just do's and don'ts? 
God is eager to speak to us despite our imperfections and our imperfect hearing. He's eager to speak with us. He, he wants the relationship. He sent his son so that we could have it with him. But it's only as long as we remain humble. Humble listeners, willing to subject our hearing to wise correction at times. The discipline of listening can change our families, our lives, and our relationships. Why is it important to listen, to be able to listen? Because God says so, period, right? He said so in his word. It's attainable if you could only find and crawl up into that lap of the Lord <laughs> in your prayer time. Practice in the little things, and you'll get big answers in the big things. When they come up, you'll know his voice. If, it's, if it has to do with, you know, driving here or driving there, or where should I get gas and this and that, you seem it's, it's, it might be trivial to you, but if you're listening to the Spirit of the Lord, he could, he could take you on an adventure pretty much every day to make a, an ordinary day seem extraordinary. Listen and be willing, right? Guarantee it if you practice in those little things, in the big things, you'll be able to hear his voice very well and recognize it right away. Whether it's a job that you need or the woman that you're supposed to marry or what have you. The bigger, you know, the, the bigger the questions, the, the bigger the answers and God will show himself true. And a voice came from the cloud and it said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Mark 9, 7. Amen. That's all. What do you think? You want to listen? You want to try to get creative in, in your prayer time and say, Lord, you can speak to me any way you want, whether it's through your creation or whether it's through this Hallmark movie, <laughs> or whether it's through, you know, a Puffs commercial, which is they're just horrible. They're just like Hallmark commercials. <laughs> Kleenex. But I'm telling you, you know, one of the one of the, the, the greatest things that, that, that I've experienced is raising the children have taught me how how much that, that the Lord loves us. That he would give his son for us. Tell us to listen to him. And how many of us don't? How many of us quench those, you know, the, the, those, those still small voices and, and, and battle distractions? And, you know, there's even more and more distractions right now than there is my whole life, probably. It's, it's, it's easy to fall into the trap and be concerned about everything that's going around around us when it's not even our... our really our business you know we're, we're ignoring what's right here at home and and all we're doing is is focusing our attention and our all of our emotional energy on things that aren't worth the payment and I think that God wants to bring us back to you know bring us back to him bring us back to our jurisdiction the 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 where we are, what we were planted, where we, you know, where we were given our lives to be sown for Him. And, and we all have that part to play. And I think that's what God wants us to do, is listen. Right? All right. Thank you, Father, for this awesome day and this opportunity to speak in with your people and we just ask Lord that you would take the word that was spoken and and let it grow in the hearts of those that have heard we just thank you father for this this coming week and this coming year and we just ask you to keep us warm <laughs> during this time and in Jesus name amen. you've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark 
of Full Stature Ministries at forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com.